Okay, back again, uh, this time with nearly the same suspects with a slight deviation. So this was work actually done by one of my new PhD students, Ben Shun, uh, Nick again, and Oren, uh, and Xiaolu, who was a postdoc who is now a postdoc. So what I'm going to talk about now is sort of uh, a rabbit hole that we went down working on the previous work. That is, we had query variants uh, that humans had, had derived, uh, one set that was done by, by IR professionals, which was the robust set, and another which was done uh, through crowdsourcing, uh, with lots and lots of variants generated. And that was basically done through Microsoft's crowdsourcing, actually. So the, query, the queries that they got were pretty good, but obviously a lot more. And so what we're interested in was, okay, we know humans can generate good queries, uh, how plausible is it for us to, uh, to find good queries for an information need uh, from query logs? Uh, and in this case, the query logs that we were using were uh, from Bing for several months uh, from live Bing search, which Nick crawled uh, in, in a particular way to find lots of query variants, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So back to our, our lovely robust track uh, description again. We have a query. Many of us are ran. Uh, if you play this collection, teenage pregnancy, uh, this happens to be uh, a hard query. That is, uh, if you run this query, uh, the results are not good in this collection. It's one of the harder queries. Now, understanding what the query is supposed to be about is pretty easy. Most of us know what teenage pregnancy is. The description is pretty clear. You can generate all sorts of queries, right? Teenage pregnancy reduction, causes, results, birth rate, teenage mothers. You can just do this forever. And you can come up with lots of queries, and most of them are bad on this, this particular topic in this particular collection. So we can generate variants, as we talked about in many ways. Uh, so we have sort of domain experts. We have crowdsourcing. Uh, what we're doing in this work here is related to the click graph. It's a bipartite graph. It's a random walk on a click graph, basically. Uh, in our group, we are also looking at several other ways. Uh, previously, last year at Desires, we looked at trying to sample queries from uh, pseudo-relevant feedback models using external corpora. The results were pretty decent, um, but not as good as the humans, right? So this is always the challenge. There are other ways too, obviously. NLP has got lots of neat little tools, and we're spending a lot of time in our group and other groups uh, trying to figure out how to generate things that look like queries that humans might write that also happen to perform well on a particular collection. Right, so the research questions that have been shown looked at here were okay, we know humans can do this. Is it possible for us to generate a pool of queries much cheaper uh, that, uh, that, that is of equivalent effectiveness? And then also, how are these queries similar and different? So the click graph is like this. I didn't describe this perfectly well last time. I'll talk a little bit more about this, particularly for robust. The robust queries are 15 years old now. They're very old. It turns out that if you go run that query, and Nick did, when he ran it in Bing, um, it's, not in, it's not in the search logs, right? That's not terribly surprising. Some of these queries are a bit strange. Uh, so the queries didn't exist. So what he did was he created a pseudo node in, in the graph, basically. He ran the query on the live search system. He figured out which documents uh, mapped to that query. Uh, and then he went to the query logs to find other queries that went to the same document. So it's the same trick, but he had to create this pseudo node in order to add new queries. Uh, and it worked OK. And I say that OK if we look at the numbers. What we'll see is um, for Clue Web 12, the, the human variants, there are 100 topics uh, versus 249 topics in the robust. Uh, the number of variants on average for the humans, uh, the crowdsourcing for the Clue Web are quite high. Uh, some, of the, some of the topics we had up to 86 different variants. There are actually duplicates, so some humans obviously choose exactly the same queries, some are very popular. But there, there's a long tail of unique queries as well. So what we see is that across the automatic system, now Nick didn't try super hard. Um, I think in general he was only generating maybe 50 or 60 queries. A lot of the queries that come out of the query log, I guess uh, industry people will know this, 
um, are mostly people misspelling words. Um, so there are lots of query variants, which are just bad spelling, um, and those aren't very good queries. So there's a lot of filtering that was involved to sort of get sort of the queries that are useful. So the numbers are uh, uh, not terribly different. Uh, on the tail end, there, there are some queries where we didn't get very many variants. But we also haven't tried very hard to get query variants for those. So here's another one of those little graphs that I like to draw. In this case, it's slightly different. Last time, we ordered by the title query. In this case, what we did was we sorted by the median query of all the non queries. And then we said, based on that, where does, the, where does the original title query fall? And what we see is that the title queries tend to be pretty good, except when they're not. Right? Sometimes they're really, really bad. Uh, and there's a lot of queries that are much better. Uh, and so it brings into question whether or not these topics are actually as hard as we think they are. Uh, and the answer is, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Some of them are. Some of them still are hard, but some of them are clearly very easy. Uh, so what we did was, in the paper, we said, okay, the, the, the random walk is generating a lot of garbage queries, lots of misspellings, lots of things that we, we didn't account for. Uh, so if we just take one document uh, as a ground truth and we use that to sort of try and filter out uh, queries that, uh, that are clearly bad, uh, can, how many queries do we have to draw to get to the point where the overlap between the two sets is pretty similar? And so that's what we did. Essentially, the top are the human query variants, the bottom are the automatic ones. As you can see, we start shaving off 10% of the time, and the bar starts going up. This is the median bar. But eventually, the median bar and, and uh, sort of is equivalent across the two collections, is what we sort of found. And it's about roughly half of the topics, uh, the queries that we generated completely automatically using the random wall versus the human curated ones. Is it a fair comparison? No. It's not a fair comparison because human curated literally means human curated. People sat around and like literally went through every query and said, this is a good one, this is a bad one. The automatic ones, we can generate as many as we have available in the query log. So uh, it is obviously easier to do that, and we're very interested in continuing the work. I don't think it's terribly difficult, actually, to come up with filtering techniques to find decent queries. You don't have to find the best queries. All you really want to do is to get rid of the queries that are clearly not good. And as long as you have five, six, ten pretty decent queries and you combine them, the results are really, really good. Okay, so again, if we look at these numbers, if you look at these numbers, again, what we're looking at here is the not a fusion run. This is literally for each of the query, each topic, uh, what is the median query? Find me a query that is representative of all the queries that I've seen so far. Uh, and that's what we're looking at here. If you fuse them, these results are much higher. But what we see is the title query, right, is you sort of get sort of AP values in this area. Uh, but basically the user queries uh, were on, on, on median, they're lower, um, but not always. And again, if you start dropping topics, you can get sort of get up to, to the similar performance as well. So, other things we did uh, in here was, what we found actually is if, let's say for each set, if you just take the best query, just take one query for each, each topic, the best one from each set, what happens? The results obviously are very good then. It's no clear way to know which one is best, but you can do it. Uh, and of course, to me, most interestingly, what we found is that the, the humans and the machine uh, actually definitely returned to different, not only did they return different queries, but uh, some of them were very, very good and very different. So we looked at similarities, which I'll show you in a minute. On average, how many did we drop? What we found is uh, basically about half. What we found is 13 of the topics that came from the human, uh, we could, we could, uh, was this, sorry, this is backwards. 13 topics outperformed the human set. So the automatic queries that we got from the logs, 13 of them we didn't have to change at all, and they were better than any human queries that we ever got. So there were clearly good queries coming out. Uh, conversely, there were several topics that the humans did better on than the query logs did. Surprising either. Uh, 
for the for the robust one, the numbers are a little more skewed. Um, the reason that the numbers are skewed is the robust were literally created by Trek experts. I would say it was me and Alistair and Paul and Mark and our PhD students, people who have stared at these things for many many years. So we, we like to believe what we get it right in queries for search engines, uh, and we've also spent way too much time on these collections. So uh, so the results for robust, the query variance we have are genuinely good uh, and consistently good. Whereas the clue web ones came from crowdsourcing, so there's a higher variance in those, but there's a lot more. So, anything else that I want to say here? So there's some things I can talk about uh, in the in the actual talk uh, at the poster if you're interested. We looked at a bunch of different comparisons. To the two main comparisons were how do the terms overlap? Just straight term overlaps, similarity between the ones that we got from query logs versus the ones that the humans generated. We found that there's a huge diversity in the queries consistently uh, across the two sets, which surprises a lot. And uh, even more interestingly, which maybe we should have expected, is that if you look at uh, the retrieval similarity, they're, retrie they're retrieving very different documents. Uh, and this is an interesting problem for us, and it's a problem that's also well known in IR. Because if you go back and look at these scores here, uh, where we're looking at so these automatic things. These are, if you don't know what these are, this is RBP, these are residuals, and the residuals basically quantify the percentage of unjudged documents that are in your list. And what we see is half the documents that are coming from these queries aren't judged, so they're probably not good, but maybe they are, we don't really know. For robust, there tend not to be too many. For clue web, you can find unjudged relevant documents all day long. So it's a very different problem in the two collections. So I, the moral of the story is there are lots of queries out there. My favorite one of all of this when we did sort of the failure analysis was this one. This one broke my heart. Um, so teenage privacy as we talked about, super hard query. Uh, all of us super uh, smart uh, expert IR people wrote our queries. Not a single one of us used the word teen instead of the word teenage. Turns out if you use the word teen, the query goes from hard to easy in the collection. Uh, didn't know that, but I do now. So, uh, but it's certainly, certainly uh, very easy and explainable to look at these queries and mostly and understand why they're good and why they're not. But there's lots of interesting things about stereo query variants related to explainability too. Uh, so, all right. That's all I'll say. There's more breakdowns. I can show you these breakdown graphs all day long. That's it.